So welcome back to another episode, the finale of season three for The Mandalorian. Uh, last week we had a really good episode. We have uh, the Mandalorians going back to Mandalore uh, to try to take back Mandalore to explore. They're trying to go back to the uh, Great Forge. Uh, they go back to the planet and uh, basically find out that Moff Gideon has a base uh, on the planet. Uh, they are... Uh, entrapped by Moff Gideon. Then Dejarian is taken by Moff Gideon. Uh, we lose Paz Vizsla as well. Uh, we got to look at some Praetorian guards. Uh, the majority of the Mandalorians do manage to escape, uh, so we'll see what happens to them. Uh, there's also the matter of who is the spy, uh, which could be the armorer, uh, could be the new Mandalorians that we saw uh, who stayed on Mandalore and for some reason were never discovered by Moff Gideon or they, for some reason, didn't know the Empire had a base on uh, the planet itself. So, as I mentioned, a really, really good episode, guys. So we'll see what we get in this episode. So let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and get into this episode eight of season three, the finale. Uh, so let's see what they have for us, guys. Okay, so the Mandalorians are still escaping. Nice, that was nice. Man, they got Mando. Ah, I knew he was gonna try to escape. That's right, Mando. Ooh. Mmm, nice, ooh, ah. Ah, mmm, mmm. Watch out behind you, Mando. Damn it. Fuck. Damn it. Oh, that's right. Where did Grogu come from? Where did Grogu come from? So they're gonna lose the fleet, at least the uh, cruiser. Axe, oh, damn. That's cool. That looks good. Damn. That all looked nice. What beautiful scenery. Whoa. Oh, damn. Cool shot. Man, Axe, don't give yourself up, bro. Get out, out off of that ship. Man, get off of that ship, man. man he, he got he got a couple. Get out of that ship, though, man. Damn. 
Hmm. They ain't tried to get his, his weapon. Huh, so how is R5 able to override their systems? Damn. Uh, shield and a, um. Nice. Ooh. Mmm. Mmm. Now he's got a gun. He's gonna pay the price for that, though. Damn. Damn. Okay, where the vats and they, these vats look like. It looks like Snoke in there. Are they gonna have to zoom, let, zoom in and let us see? Oh, those are clones of Gideon. Yeah. And cloned himself. So the next generation of clone troopers. See, I thought the next, well, this generation of clone troopers were gonna be Moff Gideon's. What? Oh, that's the armor that everyone thought was a turncoat. Damn, that's another nice shot with the mandos. That's nice. Damn, and the gauntlets. Following suit. Oh, dude, how many Mandalorians are we gonna have? Oh, even the armor was out there with a backpack, with a jetpack. Damn, look at all those Mandalorians. That is a very good job, guys. Very good. Wow, with the dark saber. Oh wow, damn. It's about to go down right now. Is this gonna be an aerial battle on jet with jetpacks? What? All right, guys, let's do it then. They really doing that? All right. Damn. Woo! Nice. Nice. Look at the armor. Look at Bo Katan. That was nice. Yeah. No, I knew he was going to say that. No way. What if this is a clone? Damn. What if that's... I think that's a moth clone. Oh, damn, the Praetorian Guards. I wonder if Grogu's going to get involved. Damn. Man, the battle, uh-oh. I knew Grogu was going to get involved. Uh-oh. What? Damn. Damn. Ah. 
Damn. Shoot. I wonder what they killed Grogu off. Damn. Damn the armorer. <laughs> the armorer. <laughs> Way to go, bo -Katan. Oh, did she just do it with the uh, knee rockets? That was nice. Ah. Uh, damn. Uh, we lost R12, uh, RG12 again. Damn. Man. He's got ro robotics in there or something. Not damn. So he's got the strength of the um, dark trooper in that suit. Ooh. She's taking him out with the dark saber. Ooh. Bo Katan. Oh, what the hell? Hmm. Ah. Oh. Hmm. That's real. Damn. Is Bo going to lose this fight, though? I was wondering if Bo would get killed off, and they might do Bo. Hmm. Nice. Damn. Damn it. Mm. Nice. Damn, did he break the oh he destroyed the saber? Damn. He destroyed it. The dark saber's gone. Ooh. You've lost everything. That's real. I knew they were gonna show up. That's right, Axe. Yeah, you didn't need to stay in there. Good job, Axe. Damn. Holy. Oh, damn. Did Grogu save him with the force? Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. Here's the way. This is the way. So you now they really are father son. Din Grogu. Mythosaur. You can see it. And 
that they relit the Great Forge. Damn. Uh, Dave Filoni's back there. We really appreciate what you did. You don't have the resources to protect the outer rim, let alone hunt down Imperial. Uh oh, he's going to be a ranger. Work. Let me get this straight. You want to work for the new republic? All that require is a small advance. What I want in return is that. What? IG, yeah, IG's back. Greetings, citizens. I am IG 11. IG. Your new Marshal of Navarre. I am here to serve and protect the citizenry. I am at your disposal. He's the Marshal. At your pleasure. Look at that. He's got a weapon, he's got a, a holster. That's a new figure. IG 11's getting a. Makeup. Ooh, okay. I like his cabin. That's cool. That should be a nice little uh, set to get. Oh, uh, look. Look at Grogu. Interesting that, that we got a very nice tied up in All right, you guys. So um, I thought that was a really, really good finale. I really liked how it wrapped everything up. And we got some really, really good uh, battles in there, uh, aerial battles on jetpacks. The uh, armor just smashing people left and right uh, was absolutely outstanding. Uh, Bo-Katan wielding uh, the Darksaber. The Darksaber has been destroyed, uh, by the way. Uh, Moff Gideon most definitely was a formidable uh, opponent in this particular battle, even though he did lose uh, in, in this battle seemingly and he could have died but he also could have survived because it is Beskar armor even though it was an explosion that engulfed him uh, he still could have survived that um, but we'll see if that uh, remains to be true I think that that kind of leaves it open in plus we, we didn't see a body uh, so we know if there's no body uh, the uh, individual could still survive um, and, and I heard uh, rumors that there was, this was going to be a very sad ending. Um, I, I expecting some, to lose someone. Uh, we thought uh, uh, there were rumors that we were going to lose Din. Uh, obviously, that didn't happen. Um, I was a little worried about Bo Katan, uh, especially with her fight with Moff Gideon uh, when the Dark Saber was destroyed. But she survived her uh, fight, and then you, you had Axe Wolves, uh, who I mean, it, I don't know if his death would have been that saddening, but it would have been a little disappointing because he is a very cool character, but um, he obviously survived. He did not go down with the uh, cruiser, but they did lose the cruiser, uh, unfortunately, which was very, very cool with the uh, mythosaur symbol underneath that, uh, the bottom of that cruiser. That was very, very cool. I, I, I hope they produce that in some type of toy, toy form uh, in some capacity. Um, but it was a really, really good episode. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I, I thought the visuals were great in this uh, particular episode. I, my, what I wonder is how the fans are going to feel about not necessarily uh, anyone taking any losses. Uh, we even got IG-11 back, um, as opposed to uh, after we thought we lost uh, IG-12, uh, we, we thought we we're going to have this cool thing with Grogu and uh, IG-12 uh, running around with um, the Mandalorian doing cool things. Um, and they, that never materialized. I thought they were really going to have Grogu doing some, some really cool stuff uh, in that uh, frame, in that body of uh, IG-11 uh, or, or IG-12 uh, at that particular point. Um, but they were uh, able to bring back IG-11, and now he is the marshal uh, for Navarro, uh, while the Mandalorian is now secretly working for the Republic uh, as a um, undercover marshal, if you will. So he's good. So he's going back to uh, doing what he's uh, used to do, uh, but not as a bounty hunter, uh, more on uh, on the side of the Republic, which is going to be interesting to see how they, that all uh, develops uh, for season four, um, because now they've kind of taken Din away from the main story. And now you have Bo-Katan, uh, who is now uh, leading the Mandalorians, who have now taken back Mandalore. They uh, relit the Great Forge um, and taken back their home planet from Moff Gideon. So 
uh, you, you have that uh, aspect of this uh, particular uh, story that they're all putting together. And again, this, if, if you remember, uh, the Mandalorian is just part of a, a, a greater story that's going on, that's being told between all of the uh, different series, uh, the Star Wars series that have been coming out, uh, which will also include uh, the Ahsoka series uh, and also will include the series with Jude Law. Um, and I, I'm not sure if the Acolyte is also going to be included uh, in this uh, culmination of all of the uh, TV series in the movie that Filoni is going to be producing uh, in the next couple of years. Um, but we also have the Acolyte uh, that will be coming up as well. So a uh, really, really good uh, and very interesting episode. We also know that Moff Gideon was uh, cloning himself, uh, but not only cloning himself, but trying to clone himself with force abilities. Uh, it seems he was on the cusp of uh, getting what he was looking for. Um, but uh, obviously the Mandalorian uh, killed all of those clones and took them out. So um, very interesting. And then uh, Moff Gideon in that suit alone. Uh, so it was very, very powerful. Uh, he had the power of the dark trooper uh, that we saw last season in season two, uh, but uh, with the protection of the Beskar armor. So, um, and he, uh, again, proved to be very formidable. It, it really took the um, destruction of the base or the, that um, cruiser uh, to be taken down to uh, really take him out. Uh, he was handling Bo-Katan and Din Djarin uh, very easily. So um, we do now know that they have the technology or, or they are somewhere close to being able to uh, create clones with force abilities. Uh, we know that Snoke uh, obviously had force abilities. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting to see wh where uh, they go and how the tie-ins uh, from this particular story, story thread with, in regards to cloning uh, will, will end up. Uh, we got the introduction of the um, Shadow Council in the, uh, in the previous episode. Uh, so we'll see if uh, that uh, faction or that uh, shows up in any of the new series. Uh, again, we have the Ahsoka series that uh, won't be uh, too long from now. So again, I thought it was a really good episode. I enjoyed it a lot. And I'm going to go ahead and score this episode. And I'm going to give this episode uh, a very good 9.5 out of 10. Uh, I, I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10. Um, I thought it was very good. I, it, it did its job. It wrapped up all the storylines. We got a very nice battle. Uh, we got to see the Mythosaur, but the Mythosaur didn't present itself uh, to uh, everyone. But we know Grogu did sense the Mythosaur um, in the waters. Uh, Grogu has now uh, graduated from being a foundling to uh, now being a uh, apprentice. Uh, and he has now been uh, officially adopted by Din Djarin. So now he is Din Grogu. Uh, so we have that uh, revelation from this uh, particular episode as well. It'll be interesting to see what the fans think of this episode. I think they uh, did do a lot with the budget, uh, especially with the visuals, the ships, um, all of the Mandalorians uh, in flight, fighting uh, the scenes that they uh, created with the armor, uh, ba battling, the, the, uh, battling those uh, troopers in flight uh, was really, really cool. Very interesting. I, I, I just absolutely loved it. Um, and then, of course, Bo-Katan wielding uh, the Darksaber, even though she loses the Darksaber and the Darksaber is destroyed. Again, I thought it was very, very cool. And it, it'll see what will happen since the Darksaber has been destroyed. Uh, it'll see it'll be interesting to see what those those who follow the lore of the Darksaber, as far as Mandalorians are concerned, if they will continue to follow Bo-Katan now that she uh, does not obviously possess uh, the Darksaber. So uh, we'll see. Um, how that all comes about, guys. But uh, I thought it was a really good episode uh, and and uh, I thought it was a very decent finale uh, as far as finales go. One other thing, uh, the major thing uh, that kind of disappointed me a little bit is that we didn't get an end credit scene. I thought we'd get an end credit scene uh, depicting Pelion uh, talking to Thrawn um, and telling him about Moff Gideon's uh, betrayal. Uh, but obviously we didn't get anything like that at all. Uh, in regards to an end credit scene, or at least I didn't see anything like that. Um, so I, I was a little disappointed by that. Um, I think that would have boosted this finale up uh, greatly and would have been a great setup for the Ahsoka series if we would have gotten some kind of uh, mention or um, end credit scene with Thrawn. 
uh, involved, but uh, obviously we did not get that. So that was a little bit uh, disappointing, um, but uh, still in all, I thought it was a great finale and I am looking forward to season four and seeing uh, how this story is gonna progress as far as uh, Din now being back to uh, the adventure of the week, uh, which it seems what, what we're gonna be getting into uh, next season, which uh, a lot of the fans were complaining that they missed from the first two seasons. So now uh, they've gotten their wish. Uh, Din will be going back to that uh, week to week mission as opposed to uh, just being a part of a bigger story uh, that's going on within the Star Wars universe, which is what this particular season uh, did involve. Um, and, and speaking in regards to the season itself, I thought the season was a, a very good season. I enjoyed it more than I, I believe most people did. Uh, the one episode with Jack Black and uh, Lizzo um, obviously was not one of my favorite episodes. Um, and maybe those cameos were a little bit jarring, um, but I, I, it didn't bother me as much as it did others. I did enjoy uh, the little buddy cop uh, thing with the droids. Um, I thought that was very interesting. I liked how uh, the team up between Bo-Katan and uh, Din Djarin, I thought they worked very, very well uh, with each other. And, and we sh saw many aspects of that uh, within this season, and including in this uh, finale when they both took on uh, Moff Gideon in that uh, Dark Troop pursuit. Um, so uh, obviously we will see those two team up again, even though Din uh, has now basically back on his own uh, away from the uh, clan and the, the Mandalorians on Mandalore. So in regards uh, to the season, I, I thought it was a really good season. If I had to give this season a score, um, I probably would give it an 8.5 uh, out of 10. Um, obviously there were some uh, episodes uh, that I, I really enjoyed. I enjoyed all, all, all the episodes, um, but there were uh, some episodes that kind of left you wondering where uh, things were going. Uh, I think uh, one uh, aspect of the season that might be a little bit of a letdown is uh, the one episode that we had with Dr. Pershing, and we didn't really get any, well, we did get some um, closure uh, with that episode when Moff Gideon explains that uh, his research was lost, but they'll uh, be picking up uh, with that research. And I don't know if that was a lie that he was telling Brendel Hux uh, in that uh, meeting with the Shadow Council, but um, we really, for them to spend a whole episode with Dr. Pershing, um, we, I, I feel as though we didn't really get a, enough payoff uh, for having to uh, go through that whole episode with Dr. Pershing. I think you could have made that a, a small piece of uh, one episode uh, that included the Mandalorian and uh, what was going on with them trying to uh, get back or, or take back Mandalore. Um, but instead we spent that whole episode with uh, Dr. Pershing, which basically seemed to go nowhere for the exception uh, that we did find out that Moff Gideon uh, did, was using research to uh, clone himself and uh, clone himself with force abilities. Um, so and I still feel like that uh, storyline didn't really uh, meet its full potential. So that was a little uh, disappointing in the, in, within this season for us to spend so much time with Dr. Pershing and not get a big payoff. Uh, but other than that, I really did enjoy every single episode, including the episode with Dr. Pershing. I did enjoy that episode a lot. I just wish it went somewhere a little bit greater than where it ended up, uh, just as an explanation. It, it really didn't even end up in, in, as an explanation. Um, we, we do know that Brendel Hux was looking forward to uh, getting his hands on Dr. Pershing and his research. Uh, but of course, again, uh, Moff Gideon did away with that, uh, with Alana Kane. And then also, uh, Alana Kane is still uh, out there as well. Uh, she's within the uh, Republic. Uh, I'm sure she's gonna find out that Din Djarin is working uh, for the Republic. Um, that is if Moff Gideon is still alive, uh, which he very well uh, could be, because again, we did not get a body uh, from him uh, after the explosion with the uh, cruiser crashing into the base. So uh, really good episode. I did enjoy it a lot. And that's why I scored it a 9.5. Uh, and then of course the uh, season, I did enjoy a lot as well. Uh, there just were uh, a few little disappointing aspects of the season where storylines didn't really meet their full potential in regards to my opinion. Um, and that's why I scored the season uh, as an 8.5 guys. But let me know what your thoughts are in regards to not only this finale, uh, but the uh, season as a whole. Uh, what would you score uh, this finale and what would you score uh, the season as a whole? Or were you a little disappointed with this season? Uh, I, I I would 
feel like this season wasn't the best uh, out of the three. It might be the least uh, of the uh, three, but it's still a very good season uh, as far as series goes. Uh, it just didn't. Um, I, I, and I think it would have been one of the best seasons if we would have got more out of some of the storylines uh, that were presented uh, in this uh, particular season. But uh, we did get one major storyline fulfilled, which was the uh, Mandalorians retaking uh, Mandalorian and getting their home back. And they definitely did that uh, in this season and accomplished that. Uh, so that was a, a, a very cool aspect of this particular season. Also, guys, I will be doing a reaction to, I believe it's good, we're going to get about eight uh, episodes of Visions uh, Volume 2. Uh, that will be premiering on May the 4th, Be With You. Uh, so I will be doing reactions to all eight uh, of those episodes. I'm not sure exactly how many there are. I'm, I'm kind of guessing in the dark that there's uh, going to be about eight uh, different episodes from uh, different animators. Uh, from the first volume of the Visions uh, series that we received. Uh, but again, I will be doing reactions to uh, all of those episodes. So please do come back uh, for those reactions. And then, of course, I will be doing reactions to the Ahsoka series. I will also be doing reactions to uh, the Acolyte, as well as the uh, series that we have coming up with Jude Law. Uh, again, guys, uh, please do stay uh, with the channel. Uh, we will be doing lots of reactions. And then, of course, I'll also uh, will be continuing my toy reviews uh, for Star Wars action figures as well. Uh, for my collectors out there, I will be doing a review of the Vintage Collection Bunker from Return of the Jedi. I uh, actually just got that in this past Monday. Uh, so I will be doing a review and diorama of that particular collectible uh, coming up this weekend. So uh, for my action figure collectors out there, uh, please do look out for that. Uh, but again, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And of course, guys, from the father to the son to the Obi-Wan Force Ghost, may the Force be with you always.